Welcome to another episode of In the Line of Wire. This is Jahara and I have with me today Shahzad Shahid, who is Global Head of Business Development at TPS. And we like TPS because TPS is an Apicta winner. <laughs> Hi Shahzad, how are you? I am very good. Hi Jahan, how about you? I am fine, thank you. And so thank you very much for such a brief and you know precise <laughs> introduction about TPS. See, I got your designation <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell me, um, First of all, let's talk about Apicta and TPS's Iris product winning the Pasha Awards. Yeah. What did that feel like? Uh, perhaps it's, it's, you know, it's difficult to put that feeling into words, uh, but you know, simply put, it was delightful. Uh, you see, winning Pasha Awards uh, was, I mean, we were pretty happy at it, but knowing that we were strong in the financial category in Pakistan, so we were expecting that you know we'll be the winners, uh, you know, because we are confident about the product and the customers that we have, and references and everything. But having experience of Epicta earlier, Epicta is you know a different market altogether. They've got a lot of other judges. We've got their own, you know, uh, sort of views and everything. And uh, you know, for a Pakistani company, you first have to perhaps you know create an, an, an impression that we are at least at par with the other companies that are... If that not are better. Up, if not better, at least, <laughs> right. at, least at par there right. in those countries. Uh, and uh, I must tell you that, uh, you know, perhaps if I had gone there with the sort of presentation that I made in Pakistan, I would have lost it. Uh, the night we spent, just, just the day before, in fact, I think 12 hours before that, before that presentation, uh, and sort of support that that I got from people like you and others who were there. In oh, everybody! I think everybody, people yeah. who had Imran Zia had just <laughs> got on the, off the plane and yeah, he was yeah. half asleep. But everybody <laughs> and, and, was, you know, the, uh, the feeling that I sort of was very proud of was everybody was there. All the participants, the judges, the the Pasha CEC members, all there, and one purpose: yeah. that we need to do our best. And that was what we were there for. We were supporting each other. The participants were supporting each other. It was just such a great feeling. I don't think it has happened ever before. That is right. And uh, you know, you, you're, very, you're so right. And in that environment, when everybody puts its very best from the guidance and let's say from you know, the delivering it and then listening to the, uh, you know, to the advices that were given, I did some quick changes before I went to sleep. And, uh, because it's different from a sales pitch, isn't it? That's true. It? I mean, you know, my sales pitch, uh, generally, when I go to a presentation, we generally go to people who are bankers, who right. know technology, who know the buzzwords. Right. So I realized when we did the rehearse that a lot of terms that we call buzzwords or, you know, um, those, those, those important terms that people know it, you know, they were, uh, you know, French for all of people there. So making all those quick changes, and then understanding that it's a, it's a 20 minutes presentation with lots of things to cover, uh, the suggestions that I got, they perhaps played a, you know, a very critical role in you know, making myself and the presentation that I had ready for that specific event for those 20 minutes. And uh, put Iris in the best light for the award pitch. That is right. Because the product in itself was not changed. The product was still yeah. the same, but presenting it to a different customer, Customers. so to speak. And, that is and, it, yeah. and you, really, you really did change it because when we looked <laughs> at it, <laughs> after you had made all the changes, it was totally different from it's your totally original different. pitch. That's so true. I mean, like, you know, uh, and, you know, when the, when the name was announced in that uh, glamorous ceremony, uh, it was a surprise. It was a surprise and <laughs> not a great, for me though. a great, not a great, for me though. I knew. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you're a pretty smart cookie. You kept yourself tight lipped. Yeah. I, I know. couldn't, I couldn't, you know, we could figure out that some of us have been, you know, achievers, but who, you know, which products, nobody knew. And I think it was a delightful moment when, you know, we won. And the big thing is that three awards came to Pakistan. First time a single award came to Pakistan, that was three events. Three out of 16. Three out of 16. And 145 products, products. actually participated yeah. 
from the whole of the Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific. So we were really proud. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the judges actually had tears in his eyes when, <laughs> when the winners were announced. He just, you know, he couldn't hold back. <laughs> well, I think this was... And I hope we'll do better every really, year. Inshallah, I'm looking forward towards, uh, you know, I think this is going to be in Sydney this year or Australia. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, um, in Melbourne, somewhere. I think. Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. And let, let's see how things go. Inshallah, I'm pretty confident that because of the experience that we already have gained out of it, we should do uh, better this time. You should try and sell your products in the Far East, you know, because uh, um, Faraz Woodboy was telling me that PicSense, actually when they went to Indonesia and Malaysia to target customers, uh, what happened was that one of the considerations that helped, maybe only 1%, was the fact, oh, you're in a Picta winner. <laughs> so that does help. I think it's, uh, it's something that none of us have actually thought about. We've just wanted to brand the industry as being successful and developing products that were cutting edge and all that. But the fact that it can actually help with the sale? I mean, I'm sure, you see, uh, if you look at the Pacific market, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, that Epicta win will help to convince that this product has been evaluated and judged to be best among the others who were in that specific category. So I'm, I'm sure that you know this is worth uh, a recce in that in that region. Okay. Now tell us a little about TPS. When did it start? How has it grown? And where you are at now? What kind of markets you're? See, your Pakistan, if you, look, if you look at TPS, is, first thing, let me tell you, what's the, what's the scope of TPS? TPS okay. is, as a, is a company, we are a company who are into the cards and payments industry. Okay. Now, if you go back towards uh, mid-90s or early 90s, uh, banking generally meant that you have a bank account and a checkbook, and you have to go to your specific branch to get the money or to deposit funds right. or to do other banking needs. Right. Uh, ATMs had started to be rolled out by the banks, but in a very limited quantity. The reasons primarily were networks, all right? The reason was that the banking application that the banks use were distributed, all right? So every branch has got its own banking application. And they didn't talk to each other. And they didn't talk to each other. Right. So, uh, and the branches generally closed down in the noon or, or, or evening. So thinking about having a 24 hour service where you, all right, you can go to any any ATM to actually, you know, take out, uh, you know, fund from your account. Could it was not, a dream. <laughs> it was a dream and it was a pretty expensive thing to do. Right. Because certain big banks started to, to, to work on it, but uh, it was a tough thing to do, uh, you know. So it was not, well, not, not a commodity. It was not really a, something for masses. Um, so TPS, TPS saw TPS, that as TPS an opportunity. TPS saw that because, uh, you know, uh, Sohail, Muhammad Sohail and Mubashir Rahim uh, were into this specific market. They both, uh, you know, were technical as well as they had the, the business acumen to actually understand the need the market had. Which is extremely important. Which is extremely important. And that passion to do something because in that area everything used to come from outside, right? right? It was not thought that this sophisticated, sensitive financial application can come from even South Asia or these countries. It used to come from West, right? right? So they thought about breaking the myth and coming up with something that is fit for our market, right? right? That can be that can fill those gaps, uh, because infrastructure in the in the West, even mid '90s, early '90s, was totally different from what we have even now. Yeah. So what we what they did was they came up with this concept of developing an, an ATM switch that can support these distributed banking applications and you know plugging a lot of other holes that were there in that infrastructure right that gave uh, you know sort of application in a cost effective manner that banks started adopting it right now we started it uh, in 1996 and it used to be earlier called transaction processing system right you know exactly That's what where we TPS do came what from. we do yeah right now you know as we basically moved on uh, this, you know, I would say, uh, we started to have a lot of more enhancements in the product and everything. Came up with a lot of other applications like ATM monitoring, card management application, and things of those sort. Right. With that growth in the market, uh, you know, uh, TPS started growing. Okay. We started back in 1996 
with no external funding. It was a bootstrap start startup company. Uh, you know, Sweden Investor didn't really have a lot of money to start the company. They, it was a very modest start. Right. Just like sort of the you know the people in the U.S. say that it was the company was started in a in a in a garage. In a garage. <laughs> exactly that sort of thing. Okay. It was not the own place. We don't place. have garages. So we don't have garages. <laughs> so it was uh, you know it was an area in you know in some other place. Right. But if you look if we look at the the TPS uh, position right now, in 12 to 13 years of of its age, TPS has 110 over 110 customers, and those customers are scattered across 29 countries at this point in time wow. and we are looking at uh, entering into at least two more countries in the next couple of months I would say. Okay. So growing uh, from that point to what where we are today um, I would say it was the passion of the people who started it and the hard work and the hard work and the other most important thing is the kind of uh, you know uh, I would say, you know, uh, the legacy that was passed on to the next generation and then the next generation, that has played the role. Because at TPS, we take it, we consider it, consider it as our own business. We work it with our employees and colleagues as our, as our family. like a family. And yeah. as, exactly, as our family members. So it is love, affection, thrill that help us to, you know, surpass the challenges that generally companies have. And uh, as, as I speak today, if you go to the Middle East, uh, it's a pretty developed uh, region. The entire GCC from Dubai to Oman, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, every there, cash deposit is, is very popular there. Right? Right. You put the money in and right. make payments or deposit to accounts. Majority of the deposit machines by any bank are driven by our software. Wow. A lot of people perhaps do not know it. Yeah. All right, in Pakistan. You have been very modest, that's why. We in need Pakistan. to talk about it a lot more. <laughs> in Pakistan alone, uh, almost 80% of all transactions that are performed on the ATMs or on the debit card, they are processed by our switch. We have good 24, account, 24 banks that are using our, our switch for their alternate delivery channels, which basically right. means that electronic channels where the customer can come and remotely, right. uh, you know, access the bank account. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, our big, big, you know, matter of pride is the one link, one link, which is the shared ATM network, a shared debit network, uh, you know, basically is, is driven by, by our technology. So that is one network that is combining, I think right now, 29 banks of Pakistan together and helping them do the transaction. So our dream was, number one, to integrate a bank right. so it becomes a single bank from a customer perspective. Right. Right. Then our connect dream banks and connect to... and then connect the bank so Pakistan becomes an integrated banking network. Right. At this point in time, wherever you go, if you're a customer of whichever bank, you can put your card in, in any ATM and you can access your cash. Perfect. So that is something that is not there in a lot of even developed countries. All right. Now tell me, um, during the recession, a lot of companies complain that business is down and we're facing a lot of challenges. Some companies even say we, we might have to close down. But TPS has looked at the recession as an opportunity. And you've looked at different markets that you hadn't looked at before. Tell us a little about that. Uh, you see, recession is a reality now, yep. right? So we are, um, good thing is that the people are not in the state of denial yeah. that no, this is short-lived or this is, uh, you know, this is, that is for, not impacting for, specific, us. for a specific area or for a specific right. industry. No, no, it's impacting see, everybody. When, when the consumer habits are changed, yeah. then everything changes. The Correct. bank lending uh, patterns changes, the manufacturing concerns, Exactly. Manufacture their manufacturing uh, volumes change, and today, I mean, there was this great depression, uh, you know, that we faced. I think in 1939 or somewhere, just before the World War Two, it happened. But at that point in time, the world was not so tightly interconnected. That's right. Now the economy is so tightly interconnected that whatever we impact is basically faced in the U.S. Uh, you know, the impact is there in perhaps every country that is linked together. Now. So the, the recession is true. The recession is real. So 
what we had started doing, not now in, this, in, the, in the age of recession, we started doing it some years ago. We started sowing seeds in certain lands which were thought of as barren lands. Okay. All right. Uh, so what happens is that certain barren lands are, you know, you have to put more efforts to cultivate them. But then we, we were... It's worth it in the it's end. It's worth it because what we thought earlier was that those fertile lands that we had been, you know, uh, having, having our revenue come from... They're not going to last lot, forever? <laughs> no. And secondly, those revenue, those fertile lands are looked at by every company in the world. Of course. All right. So when we go to Dubai or Kuwait or Saudi market, it's not only TPS. You will have the world's biggest company in, in our domain, ACI and Postilion and other companies. So they were true challenges. Uh, but you know, then we started looking after that. How long can we continue to make uh, to generate revenue out of those market? Because it's like if you have got five different oil wells, and the entire world wants to just consume that oil. Nobody is trying to actually go go and you know drill new wells. Drill, <laughs> drill, drill new wells. Okay. So what we what we went for was we went towards Africa. Because Africa, when the first thing comes to your mind is, you know, those poor people, you know, hungry, starved, uh, civil wars and everything. But there's another phase of Africa. And that phase is, a, is you know, rapidly growing region. Consumers. Consumers and everything. Because I, I tell you what, uh, in Times Magazine, it was reported that Africa is uh, is basically is giving the same rate of return on investments that Asia used to give in 1980s. So if you look, so it's growing at, very it is, fast. It is growing, and perhaps this is the only region at this point in time in the world that is giving you giving you good returns. So you know the good thing is that we had been doing a lot of uh, efforts there, and those efforts have have paid paid off exactly. At the when, time when you needed when, it most. <laughs> when, you know, when the world was, was actually, you know, was, was, you know, was, 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 was coming down. We have some recent successes in countries as far as Cameroon and, and you know, and Congo, uh, you know. I think this must be a first for Pakistani companies. <laughs> I know we were in Zambia and Ghana, but not in Cameroon and Congo. I, if, I you, if, you, if you look at the African map, people generally go for East Africa. Right. It's nice, it's, you know, it's Kenya and Tanzania and like you said, because they are developed and you, you do hear about a lot of success stories coming from, especially in the mobile banking segment right, and right. M, M, you know, M payment segment. We started working on a lot of different segments in the North Africa, right, and towards, towards West Africa, because uh, West Africa is basically French speaking, so it's difficult market to, to tap. Unless you, you know French. <laughs> unless you know French. Or and also you you're customizing your application in true. French. So, well. you know, the good thing is that we basically found some, uh, some good companies that could, that could help us there. And, uh, you know, we have started implementation certain, uh, you know, uh, applications at pretty big size banks in those countries. And it's, it doesn't stop there. Uh, that market we are going to invest further on. Good. And that is going to be, uh, if not the, uh, you know, uh, the biggest market for us, but it's going to be perhaps one of the most critical and important markets in at least, uh, you know, for at least the next two years. Those markets, you think oh, there is oh, a certainly. lot of opportunity most, there? Most certainly. The market is big, right? What you need to do is you need to know the climate wherever you go. So if you know the climate, if you know the economy, if you know, you know, how to actually make your way there and, you know, and, and survive there. That's how it is. Perhaps can even help people, and that's what we believe. We believe. We have always believed that if, let's say, we are going, we do not shy. We are not shy to, to claim that we are a company coming from Pakistan. Right. All right. Because that's very good. Look at our name. Our name is Tiris Pakistan Private Limited, so we can hide it. You can't hide <laughs> we it. We can hide yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm sure that you know, if let's say companies look at it, and we can, you know, if somebody wants to come to us, we can even, you know, help them in understanding the market at least to the extent that we understand. But we think that it's a, it's a good market to tap. Great. There are a lot of opportunities. A number of companies who have gone into Africa, not the areas where you have gone, have, have said that there is a lot of technology infrastructure needed, a lot of software needed, a lot of support maintenance work that is required once 
the technology is implemented. So I think there are a lot of opportunities for yeah, our companies. That's there. true. We shouldn't always look at just the U.S. because there are other markets. You have to see. I mean, like they say that you know, don't put all the eggs in one basket. Correct. I Correct. mean, you know, you know, and especially you know, between Pakistan and the U.S., it's a you know hot and cold relationship that we have <laughs> always. I can tell you this much. Um, I'm pretty confident in it, right? It's a, it it may look like a tall claim. We are confident that the switch that we have, Iris, or Phoenix, is is going to compete with any switch India has ever produced, as of as of now. But the challenge is that we can't go to India. See, if we spend a lot of time just to get a visa and then going there and then you know a lot of things, other things that can happen. We would rather like to go to places where we can get the visa easier, and you know how easy or difficult it is to get the U.S. visa. Everybody knows it. Yeah. So you know there there are there are real challenges, but I'm sure that it depends on the company and and your and your market. Don't we can't focus neglect, on one company. Yeah, yeah. We don't. don't one, we one, shouldn't one, neglect it, but yet we shouldn't focus totally uh, all our yeah, efforts on one that's, market. That's right. That's right. This is what I'm saying. Thanks a lot, uh, Shazad, for coming in and talking about TPS. I've been wanting to. <laughs> have you on the show for a long time but your travel schedule is <laughs> extremely tight <laughs> me thank you thank you very very much uh, i am i'm very you know i feel proud to be you know here and uh, sharing certain achievement that we had over past you know past few years good we'll talk to you again and we wish you all the luck in the african continent <laughs> And and the rest of the region and that the rest we are waiting in. Okay. Thank you very very much uh, for inviting me. It was a wonderful uh, you know time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So that was Shahzad Shahid, the global head of business development at TPS Pakistan Limited, and uh, I think I learned quite a bit about the new markets that are opening up for Pakistani product. If any of you want to talk to him, contact me or contact Rabia, and we'll connect you with him. He can talk, tell you more uh, about uh, how to uh, get into the African market. how to take your products there this is jahara signing off from in the line of wire